I'm incredibly honored and humbled to represent the U2. I think I'm one of two people out here today talking about the U2, and it's a, it's a great experience. I love talking to uh, the public about what it was like to fly in the U2 from my experience. You know, for me, I knew at seven years old I, I wanted to be an astronaut, and I knew I had a plan, a basic framework on how I was going to do that. I knew I was going to do well in math and science. Regardless of how well I did, I knew I was going to do the best I could. I knew I was going to go to college, and I knew I was going to be a pilot at, of some sort. And it was not until I uh, graduated with an engineering degree, uh, electrical engineering degree, that I decided that the Navy was going to be my best option uh, to, be, to be an astronaut. So I went to flight school in uh, Corpus Christi. I got winged in 96, uh, flying helicopters out of Pensacola, Florida. And I started uh, my career flying missions on the back of uh, the boat in the North Arabian Gulf, in the Middle East, and in South America. And from there, I became a T-34 and subsequent T-6 instructor uh, for the Navy, but I actually was at an Air Force base. I was one of four Navy instructors at Moody Air Force Base flying the T-6 for uh, instructing Navy and Air Force uh, students. And then from there, I was going to separate, and then I talked to uh, my commander at the time, said, hey, you, you would be a great asset in the Air Force. And I started looking at some of the programs, and uh, the U-2 of all the aircraft that I had the opportunity to apply to, the U-2 was the one that resonated with me. I, I thought the mission was great. I loved the fact it was high altitude flying. Uh, some of the reconnaissance stuff kind of transferred uh, from my uh, helicopter career and went on the interview and the rest is history. My family's proud. Um, I kind of don't think about that part. I just do what I do. Um, but I know my mom is incredibly proud of me. I know my husband is proud and my son who's seven um, he knows I've done some cool stuff. He'll tell people, my mom was a pilot. She flew high, and that, that's what he'll say. PBS just had a special in the Bessie Coleman, which um, I was kind of featured in, in narrating some of it. Bessie Coleman, who wanted to fly and be challenged, I, I just wanted to do the same thing. I wanted to challenge myself in ways that had never been done. So the U-2 is that type of aircraft. That is challenging. It's not for the faint of heart. It is not for everyone. And uh, there are some people who are um, just good at, at doing it. And it's a small group, a small cadre of us. And we love it. And we love the mission. And you can tell by the people who come here and the people I'm talking to, there's just this group of people that love the U-2 aircraft. For 65 years, it has flown. It has stood the test of time. Other aircraft have come and gone. But the U-2 is still here. It is still morphing. It's still changing. It's still adapting. It's still getting upgrades and it's still blowing other aircraft that try to do the same mission out of the water. It, it takes a group of people to get one pilot up and it's a phenomenal group of people. It starts from the intel officer who's briefing you to the maintenance personnel who make sure the aircraft is ready to the crew chief who's going to have you start engines and be with you during engine shutdown. And it's also, you know, what I said, people near and dear to my heart, the people from the physiological support squad, and those people who, their, one of their mottos is they toe the line between life and death. They maintain your suits, they maintain your helmet, um, they make sure that your food's in the cockpit, they make sure your seat kit is good. They're the ones who integrate you into the aircraft. They're the ones who see you the most vulnerable uh, when you come out to get suited up, and they're the ones who keep it professional 100% of the time. So I, I love those group of people. I had the opportunity to be the director of operations there, and then I was able to command them for about six months. So those people are, uh, those enlisted and, other, and officers, junior officers are phenomenal. Do you have a moment to look at where you're at? I mean, I think we all do it at some point, and it's just the view is serene. I always tell people it makes me realize that, you know, the world is just such a small place. And sometimes we think the distances between us are so far, but it's so small. And there's just so much more out there that um, for us to explore. And it just, you know, it just makes like your, your life is totally insignificant to the rest of the, to the, rest of the universe. So it's, it's a joy to be up there. Not a lot of people get to see that view, but it puts a lot of things in perspective for you. The, the younger generation, who's coming up, I implore you to come here. There's things that you could touch and see. This is a place to become inspired. You don't have to fly an aircraft. You don't have to be an officer. 
but I mean, it is equally important to work on the aircraft, to design things. If you have an artistic side, to come here and see the, the different ways, especially the experimental planes are designed. I mean, there's some crazy designs out there. And from an engineering standpoint, I think it's fascinating. I'm an electrical engineer. I like to look at wires all day. So you could come here and see that. You can do some virtual reality. But, you know, put your phone down for a second. Come check it out. Then you can pick your phone up, go back to your Pokemon Go or your TikTok, hit all the Pokestops, and then do it all again. <laughs>